good morning and welcome to this worship service of the First Presbyterian Church of Tuscaloosa. So glad that you have chosen to join us this morning by television or live stream as we gather together in spirit to worship God. We remain in broadcast only mode here at the church on Sunday mornings, which means this service was recorded a few days ago. So to keep up with the very latest church updates and news, please consult the church email, website, or social media. I wanted to give you a brief uh, reopening update. We are in the process of reopening, but again, it is very much a process with many, many steps involved. Please remember that as we reopen, we are taking small steps, starting small with smaller groups, and then expanding to larger uh, as uh, it, it is safe, it is de determined to be safe to do so. Uh, we want to keep safety at the forefront of all of our considerations and decisions, the safety of our church members, staff, and our greater community. We are already allowing church groups to meet in the outdoor spaces here at the church, but we are now allowing limited numbers of uh, small group meetings to go on inside the church building, 10 or fewer participants in those meetings. There are other restrictions, of course. You can call the church office to make reservations for outdoor or indoor meeting space. In addition, we are preparing for several programs to resume. Youth Sunday School resumed this morning by Zoom and Youth Group kicks off next Sunday in person on the 20th of September at 4 p.m. here at the church. And parents of youth, please remember that today, the 13th, there will be a parent meeting at 5 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, children, we are looking forward to seeing you again soon. We are getting organized for Logos. And soon we will be having Logos this year on Sunday afternoons, beginning on October the 4th. So we're making those preparations now. Be patient and wait, but we are looking forward to seeing you again soon. Presbyterian Women reminds you that there is an all-women's Bible study going on this fall that all women are invited to participate in, whether you are in a circle or not. Uh, the first of these studies will be offered tomorrow on the 14th by Zoom. There are options at 11.30 in the morning and at 7 p.m., trying to make it work for women on different schedules. Again, check the church email uh, for all the details. And again, all are welcome. All women are welcome. Also, next Sunday, we will be having our next In the Garden evening prayer service at 6 p.m. If you have not come to one of these services before, you should give it a try. It is so nice to be together in worship, in prayer, and in fellowship. It's about a 25-minute service. It is so beautiful and peaceful there in the garden. It is shaded, and it is getting cooler uh, by the day. So hopefully we will be seeing you soon at one of the In the Garden services. Again, the next one is next Sunday, the 20th at 6 p.m. Thanks again to all who have continued to give to the church during these difficult times. Since we cannot pass the offering plate this morning, we invite you to get on your phone or computer, go to our website and click on the blue Give Now button so that you can make your offering to the church this morning. And of course, you can continue to mail in checks to the church as well. I do need to let you know that we are behind in receipt of pledges. Expenses have been lower, which does help a bit, but we don't want to be so dependent on end-of-the-year catch-up giving if we can avoid that. So fulfilling pledges and regular giving is so very appreciated in these unique times we are in. There is a bulletin in the, on the church website and in the email that was sent out this morning so that you may follow along in this service of worship. Friends, let us now worship God.
standing in body or in spirit, let us praise God with the responsive call to worship. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You discern my faults from far away. You search search out out my path and my my lying down down and and are acquainted acquainted with all my ways. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Search Search me, O God, God, and know know my heart. See if there is any any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let us worship God. Let us pray. God, sower in the field of this world, continue to be gracious with us that we may patiently wait and ripen into the children of your realm, expanding the good seeds within us so that we may grow and increase the abundant harvest you intend for us all. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us acknowledge to ourselves and each other those ways we fall short of how God intends us to be. Let us confess together. We confess, O God, that our lives are a mixture of wheat and weeds. There is much good in us, but we are too quick to point it out and take all the credit for it. We live as if a little good will cancel out a lot of bad. We also confess that a weak faith sometimes allows a little bad to cancel out a lot of good. We have heard that when harvest comes, All will be sorted out. But we doubt this, forget this, and fail to trust the one who taught us this. 
Forgive us, dear God, and help us do better. Strengthen our faith to patiently wait as your fruitful harvest springs forth. Amen. Sisters and brothers, do not fear, for our God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God's hand shall lead us and hold us fast. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God has forgiven us, we should also forgive one another, sharing God's peace with each other. So let us turn to those and say, the peace of Christ be with you, and respond. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace, Luann. Peace, Andy. Peace, peace, peace Michael. Peace, peace, friends. Michael. Peace, you. peace to everyone. Peace, peace Catherine. Boys and girls, I have to tell you, it is hard to be patient. It is hard to be patient and wait for this pandemic to be over. You know, at times I find it hard to be patient and remember to wear my mask every time I leave my home. It is hard to be patient and only see my family members that live further away on a cell phone, on FaceTime or computer. I just love to hug them. You know, we have to be patient and wait until a medicine is found to keep us all safe from this virus. There are other times when it is hard to be patient and wait, like if there is bread or pizza dough or cake baking in the oven. It is hard for me to be patient and not, I just want to eat it all as soon as I smell it. You know, those three things, especially bread, is made of wheat. And the seeds of wheat are turned into flour. Jesus knew that, and he also knew that most people in his time either grew wheat or they saw it in the field. So he told stories using wheat, and he told one about being patient. And that story was something like this. He said, God has a dream for us. God wants us to live in a way that we are all happy and he said, God's dream for us is like a farmer who had a big field and took seeds of wheat and planted them all over the field. And then the farmer waited and it began to grow, kind of like nice green grass. But one night, a wind blew and it blew in different seeds 
And those seeds grew up weeds. And after a time, the workers in the field told the farmer about that. And they said, should we pull up those weeds? And the farmer said, no. Let us wait until the wheat is ready to be harvested. It will be easier then to separate the wheat from the weeds. And we can put the weeds aside and burn them and keep the wheat for what is good. You know, one of the disciples who was sitting there and heard this story said, Jesus, I don't understand quite what you mean about this wheat field and good seeds and, and seeds that are weeds. And Jesus said, you know, when you go out and do good things for other people, that is like uh, having planting seeds of wheat in a garden. And he said, if any of us go out and we're fighting or we're not helping or uh, we're just creating trouble, he said, that's kind of like the bad seeds. Those are like the weeds that are growing among us. And Jesus said, you know, God has a dream that all of our good seeds are planted and that we all work together doing those good things uh, to make this world more like the world God imagined. And just like those farm workers, though, we have to wait. Sometimes other people plant bad seeds. We have to wait and be patient until it's time to harvest and time uh, that all that is good is gathered together. So let us remember, boys and girls, that we all try to plant good seeds and that we try to do kind things for others in our lives, whether it's with the people that we live or people in our community who might be hungry or thirsty. Even if we have to wait for those bad seeds to grow up, God will take care of those. So now I invite you to pray with me, repeating after me. Dear God, Dear God, God thank you for taking care of us all. Thank, thank you, you for, for taking care of us all. Help us to do the good things. Help us to do the good things. Help us to be patient. Help us to be patient. And wait. And wait. Until the bad things are gone. Until the bad things are gone. We love you, God. We love you, God. Amen. Amen. Before we encounter God's word, let us first turn to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, send out your spirit to quiet our hearts and to open our minds in order that we might hear what you are saying to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the 13th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew, verses 24 through 30. Listen now for the word of the Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and man went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the household came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. 
let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Early this summer, we made some history here at First Presbyterian Church by having our church's first ever distance congregational meeting. In that meeting, we elected new officers to serve our church, and we conducted the vote 100% by mail-in and electronic ballot. Thankfully, no voter fraud has been detected in any way, and to this day, we have absolutely no evidence suggesting any meddling on the part of the Methodists. So, it seems we got through that history-making election without a hitch. I hope that trend continues However, electing officers in the summer left us with the great challenge of how to train these officers in the middle of the summer, in the middle of a pandemic. We typically do officer training by having an officer training retreat in the spring, in which community building and bonding is a primary component. So we faced some challenges for sure. We ended up utilizing some very old videos, VHS, old, be kind, rewind. Kids, ask your parents what those words mean. We also created some videos of our own and, of course, had some good old-fashioned Zoom meetings. But we got our new officers elected trained, examined, and voted into office by the session in the middle of a pandemic, my greatest accomplishment this whole year. All we had to do now is ordain and install them, and plans to do that this fall are in the works. So we faced some challenges, but we got through them. Praise the Lord. One of the greatest challenges we faced in officer training, however, was not technological but theological in our study of reformed theology we talked about the presbyterian emphasis on the sovereignty of god god is in control god is all powerful god is in charge of all things and nothing will be allowed to stand outside of god's will that is a great strength and emphasis of our reformed presbyterian theology but there is a problem with it, a problem that has long been brought up ever since John Calvin first articulated this theology in the 16th century, and that problem is evil. Let me explain. If you believe in the sovereignty of God, that God is in control, all-powerful, all-knowing, in charge of everything, then how do you explain the existence of evil? If God made and is in control of everything, then do you not also have to conclude that God is the source of evil and the cause of it in the world even today? If God is sovereign, then what does that say about God in the face of worldwide suffering, injustice, greed, or child abuse, cancer. The problem of evil is a difficult problem, especially for us Presbyterians. It is not a problem that is easily solved, but Jesus helps put us on the right path with his teaching in today's parable. I'm not sure that we will solve the problem of evil today. In fact, I know we will not. But perhaps we can at least get on the right path and in doing so, gain some helpful insight. Let's jump right in. He put before them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. Important point right off the bat. Jesus does not tell us where the enemy came from or who this enemy was. There is just an assumption from the beginning that evil exists, that enemies exist, that weeds sometimes grow. It's just a part of the reality we are living in. There is much good, there is much wheat in the world, but there is also evil. The good and the bad exist in the world together. The wheat and the weeds are all mixed up, growing together. So when this fact is discovered, that the wheat and the weeds are all mixed up together, the servants of the household almost immediately have questions for the master of the house and suggestions for dealing with this problem. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? Listen to those questions. Hear the doubt. Hear the implications of them. Listen. Master, did you not sow good seed? Do you not know what you're doing here? Where did these weeds come from? Are you not on top of this situation? The master answers, an enemy has done this. The slaves then said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? First they doubt, and then they sort of give their suggestions of what to do. Don't you want us to go pull the weeds? Clearly this situation has gotten beyond your control, Master. Either you've planted the wrong seed, or you failed to prevent an enemy from sowing weeds. Clearly you're in over your head. You want us to go out there and fix your mess for you? While these servants don't directly say these disrespectful things to their master, their questions and suggestions kind of imply them. They imply that they really don't have much confidence in the, the master. And folks, I think we do the exact same thing. We see some problem or difficult circumstance and believe that God should fix it in the way we see fit in the timetable that suits us. And when God does not act in that way, in that time, we conclude that God is powerless and that it is up to us to fix the problem as we see fit. But despite our doubts, our disrespectful implications, and our downright impatience, God remains patient with us. God remains wise. God even remains loving. Listen to the response of the master to the suggestion that the servants go pull up the weeds. No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. I have told you before that in biblical times, there was a mildly poisonous plant called bearded darnel. It was a weed that was sometimes called false wheat. This false wheat would grow in and among good wheat, its roots intertwining with the good wheat, so that if you tried to pull up the false wheat, the good wheat would be uprooted too. This false wheat was also problematic because it looked identical to good wheat until harvest, until it bore grain. So at harvest time, you could distinguish between the good and the false wheat, but not before. This false wheat also was referred to as tares. And in the old King James Version, of the Bible, this lesson is known as the parable of the wheat and the tares. You see, 
the master knew more about the situation than the servants realized. The master knew his servants' impatience and impulse to go out quickly solving the problem would in reality just create a much bigger problem. If you go out there and pull those weeds now, you'll uproot the wheat too, and then you'll have nothing at harvest. Wait for the harvest. Just be patient and wait, trusting that I know what I'm doing and that I have a plan and that everything is going to work out in the end. Let both of them grow together, the parable continues, until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Everything is going to work out, but you have to be patient. You have to trust me. Patience and trust required. And if that is not a word we need to hear in these days, I don't know what is. What is absolutely required for living, for surviving these days? Being patient. And trusting God, trusting that though things don't look so good now and the day they will look better is still unknown. And in the meantime, the weeds just keep getting thicker. Despite all of that, we still trust that God has a plan and everything will work out in the end, in God's own way, in God's own day. What is absolutely not helpful in living through and surviving these days? Being impatient and putting our trust in ourselves, in our own understanding and skills at dealing with this incredibly complex, complicated situation that no one has ever seen nor lived through before. Patience and trust required y'all that should be the bumper sticker of the year 2020 i've heard other phrases that could be bumper sticker possibilities for 2020 but i can't mention them in church so we better go with patience and trust required in his commentary on this passage Ted Wardlaw makes reference to God's holy and purposeful ambiguity. It's a reference to the fact that sometimes God is at work in purposeful and holy ways through situations we would characterize as ambiguous, uncertain, full of questions and doubts. Wardlaw insightfully points out that we modern-day believers, like the servants in our parable, long to come to resolution. We have a deep compulsion to settle all matters, to answer all questions, and tie up all loose ends as quickly as possible. We cannot stand for things to be unsettled in our lives, so we move toward a state of settlement as quickly as possible. And this deep compulsion is so great, and our fear of the unknown is so great that we are willing to accept false settlement in order to get out of that unsettled state. But we know from the metaphor of our parable today what settling for false wheat will do we know what trying to pull up those tares prematurely will do to the good wheat 
It will lead to a bigger mess than we could possibly imagine. And folks, I think the mess we have on our hands now is big enough. Truly, truly, patience and trust are required. As long as a sovereign God reserves the right to work through a holy and purposeful ambiguity, then patience and trust are required. And yes, God does indeed call us into action, to put our faith into action, even when we don't fully understand where we are going and what we are to do. That is true. I'm so glad you thought of that. that I thought of it too. But that is the subject of another sermon, another day. Today, Jesus is teaching and God's word to us is a reminder that patience and trust are required. What a helpful, instructive meddling and perhaps even saving word that could be for us. So friends, let us take this word to heart, planting it deep within the soil of our lives and allowing it to grow until harvest in the master's way, in the master's day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Friends, let us remain standing as we affirm our faith using the timeless words of the Apostles' Creed to answer the question, Church, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, earth and in, in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. As this was recorded earlier in the week, we urge you to check your email for the most up-to-date prayer concerns so we are able to uplift all those in our community and in our church family. Friends, let us pray. God of grace, so strong is your love for us that we are not separated from you even in death. When we are weighted down with worry and anxiety, you give us peace. When the fearful realities of everyday life threaten to chase us into oblivion, you give us rest. As the shadows of loneliness creep ever closer, you remain steadfast in your promise never to abandon us. Be with us now, in this time and in this place, as we unburden our hearts. Lifting up our prayers and sighs that are too deep for words, we can trust that you hear them all. God of mercy, there is so much going on in this world. Families and communities struggle to recover from the destruction of hurricanes and wildfires that never seem to end. There are many among us who are still mourning the loss of a loved one, while countless numbers of students and teachers and parents try to navigate a school year unlike any other we've ever seen. And every time and space, bring your presence, O oh God. Be with those mentioned above and those known only to you and to us. Be with those who struggle with hunger. Be with those who are not sure when they will return to work. Even among this death and destruction, in general, not knowing of what tomorrow brings, we give you thanks, holy God, for those strangers who respond with care and with kindness. May we be filled with your grace and mercy so that as it is in heaven becomes an everyday reality. God of compassion, even if it seems self-serving, we are right and we are bold to pray for ourselves. Guide us as we pick our way through the what ifs and the what nexts of our lives. May we feel your providence in every I don't know that we utter. Seeking to follow you always, give us the courage to take the next step on our journey. Give us the wisdom to perceive how you are speaking to us. And give us joy to do everything as a faithful response to your limit, limitless love. We ask these things in your name, and in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Knowing this truth, we hold nothing back from God to whom we belong, offering with thanksgiving a portion of what God has entrusted us to steward. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, giver of all good things, we humbly offer a portion of our gifts, not as a repayment for the grace you have given us, but as a sign of our loyalty and love. Bless these gifts that they may be used in such a way that hurriedly ushers in your kingdom 
here on earth. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Well, patience and trust are required. They certainly seem like a requirement to make it through the year 2020, but I think they are a requirement to get through all of life's journey. So as you continue this journey, be patient and keep trusting. Do so with good courage, knowing that the one we are waiting on and the one in whom we put our trust is worthy of our full confidence. And as you continue your journey, remember that the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ walks with you every day. He goes above to protect. He goes below to support. He goes in front to guide. He goes behind to encourage. And remember that he walked beside you because above all, he loves you. Knowing this great love, let us therefore go in his name, spreading the good news until we meet again. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon and remain with you and those you love both this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.